And who are you? My name is Hercule Poirot, and I'm probably the greatest detective in the world. Murder on the Orient Express. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Murder on the Orient Express. I really do appreciate it, but before I get into the review, help your boy out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button, become one of my subscribers, click the bell as well so you can be notified when I do make uploads and also give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, when the first trailer for this movie dropped a few months ago, I was really excited. I don't know why, but something was just really intriguing to me of trying to find out who is the murderer in this mystery on this train that's going to be taking place for the whole movie. And I don't know. I just got really excited about it. I got really even more excited about it when I found out that Kenneth Branagh was the director. And I really do like him as the director. And not only is he the director, he is the main star of this movie as Hercule Poirot. Now, this is a period piece taking place in the 1930s, so of course you're going to see a lot of nice costume designs and a lot of music from back in the day that we don't hear, you know, in modern day, and that really did intrigue me more. If you're familiar with uh, Kenneth Branagh, you know that he did direct Cinderella that came out in 2015. I love that movie. My expectations for that movie was very low, um, but, I, you know, I end up being very impressed by it. And he also directed Thor, the first Thor movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe universe that came out in 2011 um that movie you know of course was okay if you look at some of my past videos i, th I talked about thor a lot he didn't come back for part two or part three um but those are two movies that he did direct uh, he also did direct more movies as well now as far as his acting is concerned uh he was in actually he was the villain uh, I, f I think it was Dr. Loveless in the 1999, um, what, you know, what's it called? With Will Smith and that other guy. Wait, wait, The Wild Wild West, that horrible piece of crap right there. The movie's so bad, I forgot the name of it. And, you know, he is an actor just as much as he is a director. And in my particular taste, I prefer him more as a director. Um, I just think he's his talents are more higher in that realm. Um, he was also an actor or actor. He, was, he also played an important role as one of the generals in Dunkirk that came out earlier this year in the summer which was directed by Christopher Nolan but right now he is the director and he is the main star like I said by the name his character's name is Hercule Poirot and the best thing about this movie is his character I freaking loved it the guy is so peculiar um, like he there's like no detail that goes unoverlooked. I mean, seriously, he gives new definition to the phrase, you know, finding a needle in the haystack because he can have 50 million haystacks and he will still find that needle. And that's like one of the best things about this movie, just, you know, being him and all the details that he follows. And when I say he's peculiar and so exact with every you know motion of his body, it's like he can be walking down the street. And if he if his right foot were to step in a pile of crap or something like that, he wouldn't be upset because he stepped in a pile of crap he would be upset because there is an imbalance and he would have to put his left foot in the piece of crap as well just so that everything can be even and that may sound silly the way i'm describing it but when you actually see it in the film it really just brings a lot of light to his character it's very funny and just kind of gets you on board early on before the film is even started now, like I said, is, well, let me tell you what the movie is about. I mean, this, I'm pretty sure you've heard about this movie before. Um, this is the first adaptation uh, from the novel that, because this movie is based off a novel based uh, by Christy uh, Agatha. And the first movie came out in 1974. There was also a 2001 TV film and then a 2010 episode uh, from Agatha's Christie's Parole as well. And I have not read any of the books or seen any of the past uh, TV shows or films like this. And I, per you know, I, I mean, I, I didn't see it back in the past when I was coming up. But, you know, sometimes when things are adapted from things, uh, when films are adapted from books or films in the past, some people like to, you know, go and watch those old ones. And so they can compare it to the new ones. That's not how I felt with this one. I wanted to go in fresh. I wanted to, you know, see exactly what was going on, you know, with this murder mystery. And that is what the movie is about. It is a murder mystery. There are a number of passengers on this train trying to go from uh, destination A to destination. 
Operation B. And then there's a murder in the middle of the night. And he is a detective, you know, Hercule Perot or Kenneth Branagh, you know, with this nice little mustache. And I'll touch on that in a second. And he's like this master detective, like better than Batman. And, you know, he's just trying to figure out who solved the murder. I mean, he's trying to solve who committed the murder before uh, the train gets to his next stop. And there is a full star studded cast. I mean, you have Penelope Cruz in this, uh, Judy Dench, uh, Oliver, uh, Olivia Coleman, Willem Dafoe, um, uh, Josh Gad, you know, and there, there's just a number uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is in this as well. Just a number of high list a uh, star actors in this movie. And that's just another thing that got exciting uh, that got me excited for this movie. Now, I, earlier in the er, beginning of this review, I told you that one of the things that I liked the best was uh, Willem, not Willem Dafoe's, but Kenneth Branagh's character, Hercule Poirot, you know, just because of all his silly mannerisms and whatnot. Unfortunately, with all, with the rest of the cast, the rest of the cast is just not as interesting at all as much as Hercule. I mean, they're not interesting at all. I really don't care. I mean, they look nice in the costume designs and things like that. And they did look nice on screen. But, you know, if, if I were to take a pop quiz right now about each of their characters and what they was about and where they came from, I would probably fail miserably because just for some reason, the film did not do a good enough job of attaching me with this character. But like I said, they did look good in their costume designs. And the costume designs in this movie is not the only thing that looked good as well. The whole set of the train really did speak to me. And I did love going throughout the train, uh, seeing every corridor, every corner from top to bottom of the whole train, every inch by inch. And things that they were doing with the camera going through the train, I really did appreciate as well. And it just did a great job of pulling you into the scene and making you feel like you was really there but something that clocked me out of the movie sometimes when they were uh, you know doing flashbacks you know it will cut to beautiful color to a black and white uh, image and for some reason that just didn't flow with me well it kind of clocked me out of the movie and just kind of eliminated the illusion reminding me that this is a movie and with the film doing that back and forth a number of times you know it just wasn't you know a seamless process you know that I could have wanted so we have that gripe right there and also the rest of the cast is not as interesting as William uh, not what I keep saying William Defoe, but Hercule Poirot and something else. Um, while everything was great in the train, there was a number of shots outside the train as well as it's going through the mountains. And uh, all these scenes right here, it was blatantly obvious that it was CGI. And, you know, it, they didn't do a good job there. It just really looked fake. It did not look like, you know, you was really there on the inside. You felt that it was there. But on the outside, you know, it, it really did clock me out. And I could tell that the train was fake. I can tell that the landscape was fake. I can tell that the mountains was fake. That was also a scene towards the end of the movie, which I don't want to spoil too much. But I'll just say it has to do with the cave. And this cave really clocked me out towards the end of the movie, you know, like, and I was to the point where I was nearly dozing off. It just kind of reminded me of like this set belonged on like a high school play or something like that. I don't understand how you this can happen in a budget, you know, from 20th Century Fox because this they're producing it. They could have done a lot of better job there or maybe it could have been the directing uh, from Kenneth Branagh. I'm not sure, but, you know, I didn't like everything outside of the train, but I did like everything inside of the train. And of course, the main reason why he's seen this movie is because of the murder mystery. And as Hercule Poirot, Kenneth Branagh is going throughout the train, doing his investigations, trying to get to the bottom of who murdered um, this one individual, which I'm not going to spoil you here. That wasn't that interesting as well. And I found myself kind of bored in his uh, interviews. And, you know, I was just kind of like, you know, huh, why, why is this not grabbing me? Why don't I care? And then towards the very end of the movie, when the big secret is revealed, I wasn't just like, oh, my gosh, I never saw that coming. I was just like, oh, OK, well, I guess that's it. You know, I don't know. It just uh, for some reason, you know, this movie just didn't do it for me. I thought it was OK. Um, and I love the set design inside the train. And I love the costume design. I love Hercule Poirot. But for the rest of the characters in this movie, they just didn't do it for me. And um, I didn't care about the investigation or the mystery in the end. And the things on the outside of the train did clock me out as well. 
Just because I didn't care for it too much doesn't mean that you won't. And if I were to rate Murder on an Oriented Express, I would give this a 6.5 out of 10. Yes, a 6.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Murder on the Orient Express or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just give me a, a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can also click the bell so you can be notified. I also have written reviews as well. You can check my website out at justmyopinion.net. You can bookmark it. I would really appreciate it. And guys, also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy for you guys by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Murder on the Oriented Express, starring and directed by Kenneth Branagh. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.